So being a part of kids ministry is an incredible privilege. And whether you are leading a church for the first time, whether you are a seasoned children's church leader, or whether you are running a one-off children's event, there are some important and essential safety checks that you need to make sure are put in place. In every situation, we are safest if we do everything possible to prevent a problem from arising. And then we are also prepared if and when something goes wrong. Through prevention and preparation, we are able to keep our church, our leaders, and most importantly, our children safe. So let's jump into some troubleshooting. So perhaps there's a leader who is accused of doing something wrong, or even worse, has actually done something wrong, we want to make sure that we've done everything possible to prevent such a situation from happening. Here are some basic prevention checks. An obvious starting point is to select leaders that have a heart to serve in kids' ministry and show willingness to be held accountable. The leader should do a course so that they know and accept the vision and values of the church. The leader should also be a part of a smaller group where they are continually challenged to grow in their relationship with God as well as be held accountable for their day-to-day -day choices. Background checks are done to confirm that there is absolutely no reason why the leader should not be working with children, and the leader personally confirms this and agrees to the conduct expected of them. At least one leader on site must have a CPR or first aid certificate, and all leaders should attend children's church training regularly. You never want to find yourself in a situation where it's your word against a child's, because the cutest face always wins. The best way to prepare for such a situation is to make sure that a leader is never alone with a child. We do this by using something called the buddy system. Remember the buddy system. If a child needs the bathroom, remember the buddy system. Let a group go together or at least two leaders accompany the child. Whether the child wants to share something privately with you or you need to discuss their behavior with them, remember the buddy system. Make sure that your buddy is within hearing distance. When it comes to communicating with children out of church, remember the buddy system. Here, your buddy becomes the parent or guardian. It is not acceptable for adults to communicate with children over any social media platforms. Remember the buddy system. Make sure that another leader or parent stays until the last child is collected. So whether you are having your weekly children's church meeting or whether you're having a big children's event where a number of children are going to be found coming to your property, it is important that as a children's church leader you are aware of the regulations, the expectations that are placed on you for such events. So do you know what your venue capacity is? Do you know what safety precautions need to be applied? Do you have first aid kits? Do you have first aiders available and at hand? You need to make sure that you are clued up and aware of regulations expected for you to run an event. When you have that in place, here are some points to help prevent children from getting injured. Prevent injuries by taking the following steps. Maintain all equipment with a final check just before the children arrive. Children should never be left unattended. The greater the risk like jungle gyms and small object activities, the more supervision needed. Items such as hand sanitizers, sharp objects, and other hazardous materials should be packed away once they have been used. Remember to set rules in place and help remind the children of what they are. Ask what could go wrong and then plan a way of preventing it. Have a way to calm down rowdy games and continually look out for risks. The indemnity form and medical release that your parents complete should also list all emergency contact details as well as any allergies or medical conditions the child may have. This information should be kept close on hand. We recommend you put it on the back of the name tag that the child wears each week. In the event that a child is injured, here are some tips on how to be prepared. Be prepared for injuries.
Most of the injuries you will come across will be bumps and scrapes that require a bit of water, ice or a plaster. But at least one first aider or CPR trained person should be on site. This is not your time to try out all the procedures you watched on your favorite medical drama, but rather your responsibility is to give the care needed until a professional arrives. Although a well-maintained first aid kit containing essentials like bandages to stop bleeding, emergency blankets for shock is all vital. Remember, no leader may legally administer any medication whatsoever. Always check for allergies and medical conditions as these may increase the seriousness of the emergency. Any incident, no matter how big or small, should be written in an incident book and the parents made aware of what happened. In emergencies, contact the parents immediately for their assistance. So Children's Church is most definitely not school and we definitely don't want to make it feel like school. However, it's still important that you have rules, you have boundaries that are set in place. Why? Well, that helps a child to feel secure, helps a child to feel safe that they know what they can and cannot do. Those routines are important for them. So make sure you have rules, boundaries, consequences set in place. Make sure the children know that so that they won't find an opportunity to act out. So make sure you have those in place. Other prevention checks include Lesson and activities need to consider the child's attention span, age, experiences, limitations, abilities and so on. A child that is overwhelmed, frustrated, overexcited or bored with tiresome tasks is more likely to act out. Be ready and prepared from the moment the child arrives to the moment they leave. Time spent trying to find story aids or your playlist of songs fosters opportunities for children to misbehave. Trying to shout over a noisy crowd will have no benefits at all. Play games to get them seated or use techniques like clapping rhythms to refocus their attention. You may need to do this more than once for longer sessions. So be prepared by knowing what not to do. So no shouting, no physical punishment, no humiliating, and no emotional harm. So what we can't do is pretty obvious, but your hands are not tied. There are definitely things that we can put in place so that discipline issues do not escalate. So here's a list of things that we can do. We can remind the children about the expectations that we have of them and the consequences that are going to follow. We can use the child's name and we can ask them a question in the middle of our lesson so that it just helps them refocus again. We can bring them closer to us and make us sit nice and close when we're telling a story. We can gently place our hand on their shoulder. This just helps them know that you're there before they do anything wrong. We can also give them a responsibility like helping out with the classroom so that the child knows that it's important that they look after everybody else in the class too. We can take away the object or the thing that is making the child misbehave. This can be in a rowdy game or objects that you have lying around. You can also remove a child from the group. This can help a child just calm down or it may be necessary for the safety of the rest of the class. But remember, we always need to have a child supervised at all times and this is where the buddy system is essential. You can also call for help. If you start feeling yourself getting angry or irritated, this is the time to call in your buddy system and let them be there to help calm the situation down. As a last resort, you can send the child back to the parent or give the parent a phone call. But remember, this should always be accompanied with a chat with the parents to find out how can this be avoided in future and what techniques of discipline they use with the child. So I'm sure that being aware of all the possible things that could go wrong could make this feel really difficult, really daunting and quite overwhelming. Well the reality is as soon as you get these things into place they become rhythm, they become second nature and they become just a norm of what you do and all of a sudden you're running a, a ministry that's safe, secure and really pleasant for your children to be a part of. And also remember this, you're working in a team and most importantly you're working with the wisdom of our Father who loves our kids more than anybody He's going to be the one who leads you in and through these moments. 
So do well and enjoy it.